take a look at all the components needed for the successful completion of this project. This is the Mega 2560 microcontroller which is based on the 8 Mega 2560 chip. As you can see there are 54 digital input output pins here which operate at 5 volts. Each pin can provide or receive 20 milliamps and should not exceed a maximum value of 40 milliamperes. Among the 54 pins, there are some pins which have specialized functionalities such as the serial pins, external interrupts, the 4 SPI communication pins, LED, TWI, etc. We also have 16 analog inputs and a 256 KB of flash memory for storing code. I won't be going into the details of these components so we recommend that you do your own research to be more comfortable with the project. Let's now take a look at all the sensors that has been used in the project. This is a 4 digit 7 segment display of the common cathode type. As you can see, we need the 7 segments to represent any alpha numeric digit and a dot for decimal notation. Hence, we have 12 pins here. 4 for the individual digits D1 through D4 and 8 pins for the segments A through G and a dot as shown in the diagram above. Moving on to the buzzer. This is a small but efficient component in adding sound features to any project. Active and passive are the two kinds of commonly used buzzers and here we use this passive buzzer. This requires an oscillating signal to produce sound. It generates different sounds by sending pulses of different frequencies. Now let's take a look at the RFID module. The RFID module typically comes in the form of two components, a tag that needs to be identified and a reader. The reader consists of a RF module which generates high frequency electromagnetic waves. It communicates with the microcontroller over a 4-pin SPI interface. On the other hand, this tag is a passive device which contains a microchip and an antenna. The EM field of the reader powers this chip which responds by sending its stored information back to the reader in the form of another radio signal. This change in EM wave is detected and interpreted by the reader which then sends this data to the microcontroller. Now let's move on to the IR module. These IR detectors have a photo cell that are tuned to listen to infrared light. Inside this remote controller is a matching IR LED which emits IR pulses not visible to the human eye. The detectors convert this IR light into electrical signals which gets passed on to the microcontroller through the signal pin. Some of the other components that we use in this project is a breadboard, a few LEDs and jumper wires.
have our code uploaded we can test the functionality of our alarm clock let's take a overview of our alarm clock once more so this is a seven segment display which lets you view the number of hours that you still have left to sleep this is the ir module which lets you set the time this is the buzzer which plays the, your favorite mario song or any other song that you would wish to get up with this is a RFID module with which you can stop the Mario song and get up and enjoy your day. This is a power button with which we reset the timer. And maybe you've had a long day and you want to sleep for 10 and a half hours. So you set the timer for 1, 0, 0 and 30 minutes. Now that my timer is set for 10 hours 30 minutes, let's start the timer and have a good night's sleep. Now that my timer is running, I can peacefully go to sleep and be happy that the Mario song will wake me up. Approximately 10 hours later. Oh, that's the Mario song. That means it's time to wake up. Let me switch off the alarm with my RFID tag. Now that I'm awake, I appreciate the working of this alarm clock. I hope you guys like it too.
there are two things to note here that now we have 10 hours 30 minutes already set so the next time you want to sleep again for 10 hours 30 minutes you do not have to set the time again you can just click on the function button and now you will see that the timer starts again so this saves you the trouble to set the timer again and again if you sleep for the same fixed number of hours every day another thing to note here is that in the code we have the timer set up as minutes and seconds you can change the code for hours and minutes and this has also been explained in the code explanation block so you see it's like a box here you can close this box you can put a battery inside you can plug in the battery here you can remove this wire put it on your wall and enjoy your sleep so first let's go through the logic of the code so initially we start the code with reading ir sensor and we display the current time so this loop goes on till we don't click a button on our remote first of all let's see how we set the time so when i hit on power button it goes in time setting mode where we set hours and minutes we will see the implementation in actual code once we set the hours and minutes the pointer goes back to the display timer and again it continues to show the new set time once in the remote if we get an output which is stop our counter starts here it starts decrementing and it stays in this pointer till the timer becomes zero once the timer becomes zero it ons the buzzer and it starts reading rfid so here we have a logical statement where if i don't get rfid it will continue the buzzer and continue looking for rfid once we get the output from rfid it resets buzzer RFID, LED and timer. This shows that the person has woken up and code comes back to the top where it again starts displaying the set time. Let's go through the code first. This code will be found in our GitHub repo. The link is given in the description. Initially, you will have to include some libraries and if you download this code, when you run it, if you are having issues with the libraries, go to sketch go to include libraries add zip library and my code is in arduino project and this is my code rfid alarm clock then we define pins of our rfid so we are using ss mode so our ss pin is 53 our reset pin is 5 then we define passive buzzer pins where our melody pin is 6 so this is where my positive of buzzer is connected and my LED pin is 13. So that is why you see wonderful LEDs following the melody. So here we are using seven segment display. So we have seven segments and one pin for our decimal point. If you see in our Arduino, we have these pins initialized and plugged to our seven segment display. So here we have four digits. On the other hand, we have our IR receiver, which is a module for our remote. So we have pin number 11 for that. So this was all about pins, which I used in our project. So now let's see how we set up our Mario melody. So these are the variables where this is used by our Mario tone in order to get the wonderful sound. And also to corresponding tones, we have tempos. So these are basically delays for our Mario song. These are much more sound related. So we found a great resource, which is on this GitHub page where they have many more tones. So if you guys are not fans of Mario, you can convert to Game of Thrones anytime. So they have many wonderful songs which can be run on your Arduino alarm. Then we initialize all the zeros and ones for our digits. So if I want zero, I will pass this number because my A, B, C, D, E and F should be lit. So those are the ones and my G should be off, DP should be off. So that is how we made these zero. Similarly, you can derive the remaining digits. Then we have 
some variables which we define so now let's look at setup so we are using our serial monitor so this guy is beginning the serial monitor then we are initializing pins of melody and led pins similarly we are receiving it from ir here we are having eight pins for our individual leds for our display and here we are having four pins for our digital display and some printing statements then we once we come in the loop we see this code where we are reading the value of ir and we are displaying the current set time and if you click the button power button so this guy is the hex value of our power button so once we see this we set the timing for hours minutes and we display it. so this was all left part of our logic and on our right part which is when we have this hex value which is for stop we we start a while loop where this while loop will only close if we pause or if we if the person has woke up that means we got a signal of rfid and we started reducing each minute so while this is going on we also start our buzzer so this sync function which will see, we will see below is the function for our buzzer so it starts uh, singing mario and we have some print statements here so our sync function takes in all the notes and the tempos which we give and it checks for rfid while it is singing because if we don't have this function here our rfid will not be registered when the buzzer is singing so we check for rfid for getting the rfid value here you guys should note that if you want to use exact rfid for your application you need to uncomment this if loop and we also have a code for you which is in the folder which says identify rfid once we get this particular value we set our woke up flag to be true and our buzzer stops and that is when it's good morning and if you implement this if loop you can also have else loop where if the specified rfid is not provided it will print wrong card you can give access to some of your rfid cards and not to others also we have a helper function which converts our result from our ir and prints the value so we also have a display function where we are running the display function in such a way that display function acts as a delay and as our displayer so if you see here the value of our display function has a loop of 50 and our display function takes 20 milliseconds to display as there are four displays so those 20 milliseconds if i multiply it 50 times i get one second so currently you must have seen the project which is implemented for minutes and seconds just by changing this for loop which is changing from 50 to 3000 will convert this project to be hours and minutes and then we have a bunch of helper functions so this was all about the code hope you liked the video do let us know in the comment section what you liked most about the project do share it with your friends and subscribe to soft illusion in order to keep yourself updated with more such fun projects